Welcome to Tantramass Studio 3. I'm Lincoln Meadows. I'm Sarah Meadows. And I'm Liam Meadows. And today we're reviewing the game Honga from Haba. from designer Gunther Burkhardt and artwork by Stephanie Bohm. It's a two to five player worker placement game. Hobbit sent us copies, so let's check it out. To set up the game, place the board and depot board next to it on the table. Place the barter cards and bonus cards on the board and the action discs nearby. Give each player their board and set the fish, berries, and mushrooms to one and water to zero. Place everyone's caveman at the base of the mountain, their mammoths on the depot board, and score tracker in the cave. Deal one gray action disc to each player, and then you're ready to play. On their turn, players will place their action disc on one of four spots. How they rotate it will determine which items or actions they get to take. Here, they will get one fish, two water, and a meeple will climb up one step of the mountain. But you must pay attention to Honga or he'll come and eat your food. If you have the most mammoths in the herd, you get the mammoth tooth and can take a more powerful red action disc. You can also barter resources with other tribes on the board to gain victory points. The first player to reach the victory point amount triggers the end of the game. The round finishes and the player with the most victory points wins. Honga is a good family weight worker placement game that you can use to introduce your family to the worker placement mechanic. It's got several spaces on the board where you can gain resources and then you track them on your own little board. And then it also has a few spaces interspersed where you can gain victory points. There's the mountain that you move up that has its own mechanic that's very easy to figure out for kids. And then it also has um, bonus cards to help you out and ways to gain victory Victory points by bartering. Yeah, I think this game was really fun. I really like trying to find the disc and like I want to get fish, I want to get water, but I also need to pet Honga. It's really fun. Yeah, it also kind of reminded me of Sly Blast, where like you're moving the pieces to get your items and stuff, and you can go to the cool areas like a woolly mammoth spot or get cards. Yeah, the Woolly Mammoth spot is interesting. It doesn't actually give you any points, but the Woolly Mammoths are important to gain the very high victory points in the barter cards. So in this um, little rondelle thing here, if you are using a, vic a if you gain a Woolly Mammoth, you move the next one along, and once your Woolly Mammoth leaves the track, you gain that to your own player board, which then you can use to barter later on in the game. Uh, if you have the majority here or you're the last player to play, if there's a tie, then you gain the Woolly Mammoth Tooth and then you get to draw cards off of the red disc pile. These are very valuable. They have higher hand numbers to allow you to gain more items very quickly. Uh, Lincoln, which area was your favorite on the board? I really like getting these extra victory cards because I kept going here and here. I got the victory cards, then I used them on these and just kept ranking up points. Yeah, yeah I really like going here also. Um, doing the Woolly Mammoth thing was helpful because like these cards are way more powerful than these. So like I could go four mushrooms and still get one here instead of just getting three mushrooms and trying to pet Honga. Yeah, petting Honga is important in the game. If you don't have a hand out that's petting Honga, then Honga actually comes to your board and starts eating all of your food that you have on your board, and then you're not able to gain points. Um, you can get rid of Honga by getting some of these bonus cards. There's several in the deck that allow you to um, have Honga go back to the board. You can also, um, once another player doesn't pet Honga, then Honga will go visit that player's board in instead. Um, 
One other thing that was uh, helpful in the game is that if you do not have the correct amount of resources to do some of the bartering, uh, the, the bonus cards have ways to switch out some of your resources for ones that you need. And there are also cards that give you bonus resources and you can use water as any resource. So that is helpful as well. Liam, what else did you like about the game? Um, I also liked um, the mountain, like if you're on the last space, you get zero points, you're on the first two spaces, you get one or you get one or two points, and then if you get to the top, you get five points, and that's like, that's as good as getting these, but all you have to do is move your guy up the mountain instead of spending items. Yes, that's a good way to not spend items, but get lots of points in the game. Uh, it comes with very nice wooden components. They're all, um, these woolly mammoths are super chunky. Um, Honga is um, a fully painted on um, meeple, so you don't have to apply stickers. That's always nice. Um, and the artwork is really great. Uh, if this sounds like something that you're interested in, you can check out Honga from Haba and then be sure to check out our other videos from Tantrum House. Bye. Just to set up the game, put up the board and the pot and depot. The and the pot. Done. Oh, How'd that sound bad. Did you get it? I don't know. I the last one. Did you get? Fun things. Yeah. You talk about how it was like Ice Age. <clears throat> no. No. I, we didn't oh, say we anything. About I, that. I, 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 I